Welcome to Jesus Experience. You are designed to receive from God the life of His Son, Jesus Christ. And through the life of Christ in you, you will live and affect the world around you. I want you to stay standing for a moment and just lift your hands in the awesome power of Him who raised you from the dead. Spirit of the living God, you raised us. You seated us. You inaugurated us in the throne of our Father. In the name and the place of Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit, we covenant together with the living word of God for your works in this month. God, that signs, wonders, demonstration of the Spirit, power, transformation, deliverance from demonic controls, severance from the world's grip, freedom from the voice of sin and condemnation. God, that we walk in the supernatural anointing of your Spirit. And we ask you, reveal yourself in this day. Pull back the curtain of your nature and reveal you. Just pray in your spirit. If you have a prayer language, pray in your spirit for a few moments. Stir up yourself in your most holy faith. You go ahead, let the roar of the presence of God arise. Let his presence just envelop your place of habitation. Let his majesty, who has crowned you with glory and honor, reign. Spirit of the living God, this time together is yours. Do what you please. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, go ahead and greet somebody and tell them this is your day. Yeah, go ahead and find somebody else and tell them this is your day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Now, I believe there is a supernatural anointing that has been released in our midst to fulfill the proclamation of Jesus Christ. That the Spirit of God is not here as a friend, he's here in power to anchor your faith in an experience of power so that we disassociate, we loose ourselves from the things that are common, the things that are ordinary, daily life as it normally goes. This week, I shared a testimony with an individual that I had some time with, and I, I said back in the mid-90s, oh, that's when this shirt was made, in 1994. We, yeah, it's, it's actually a formal shirt for those that are in office in Indonesia. So in 1984, we went for our first time and then came back again in 94 the second time and they made for me this shirt. So I saw it in the closet and I, I said to Faye, Faye, you know, I'm preaching a manifestation message on Sunday and look at this old shirt in the, in the closet. I thought it had moth holes in it. I thought, you know, I mean, 94, what still holds together? 
Yeah, it's silk, so I tried it on and it still fits. I, yeah, so I... Uh, that is a miracle right there. If you can fit in your 94 clothes, you, you've got a breakthrough. <laughs> this is breakthrough time. So I shared with this individual that I was taking teams overseas. And when they would land on the ground of foreign nations, many of you have gone with me. You were mandated to bring forth miracles. Because after I got through preaching, we brought all the crippled, deaf, dumb, blind, diseased, those that were with tumors and goiters, and we brought them all to the front. And I told my team, go get miracles and bring them to me. Well, Pastor June, who's now in the throne of God, she was so scared we had to physically pick her up and put her over the side of the platform. She was light too. And put her in the middle and blind eyes started popping open. And she gets back on the platform and says, this is too much power for me. I don't know the God that opens eyes every time I speak and touch them. I said, that's the God who lives in you, and you have no other God. She said, but I am not that person. I said, but he is that person. And every single, how many of you went with me on those trips? Raise your hand and wave at me. There's one, two, three. I thought many, but I guess after the mid-90s, some people kind of graduate. But here we are, and the miraculous demonstration of God manifested for every person. I don't want you to tell your neighbor you've come to the field with Pastor Gary. And he expects you to manifest miracles. He's going to put a demand on your life with absolute manifestation from the Holy Spirit because you are not your own. You were bought with a price. You are not your own. You are God's. So lift your hands and just say to the Father, I'm here for the miraculous. I'm here for the supernatural manifestations of your spirit. Romans 1, 3 says, concerning his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who was made of the seed of David and declared to be the son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. That Jesus Christ was not spoken about. He was proclaimed the Son of God with power in accordance to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. He wasn't a song. He was in power. He wasn't a teaching. He was in power. He wasn't a secondary byword that was used as a cuss word. He was in power. His work was done by the Holy Spirit. And so the Holy Spirit is the same Holy Spirit today that raised Jesus from the dead. Jesus is the same Jesus that God raised from the dead with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. Empowerment of hearing Jesus proclaimed is the purpose of the proclamation of Jesus. Just take a look over here in 1 Corinthians 2, verse 1. Paul writes, he said, look, 
he comes into the region where there was such incredible philosophies as Aristotle and many of the philosophers of the Greeks. And he said, and I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God, declaring the evidence God is present. God is here. God is manifesting. I determined not to know anything. Everybody look at your neighbor and say, nothing. Save Jesus Christ and him crucified. So there was a determination that any story about anybody was not being heard. Any history about anybody was not relevant. Any perception about anything had no power because a determination was made that I'm only going to know two dimensions in my relationship with humanity. And that is Jesus Christ, and he's the Son of God with power, according to the Spirit of Holiness, and him crucified, so that everything ended in his sacrifice. So there was a determination, there was a radical abandonment, there was a shutdown of any and everything else that was common conversation because the only transformation power was the proclamation of Jesus Christ. Everything else was moot. All of a sudden, he makes this statement, I was with you in weakness and in fear and much trembling. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and power that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. How many of you have the measure of faith God's given to you? It is not about objective. It is not about persona. It is about the power of God. It is anchored in the supernatural manifestation of God. I'm sitting there minding my own presence of the living God and I'm watching joints and bones and muscle and tendon and ligament being healed as the word of God goes forward. I'm watching supernatural transformation of the internal gastrointestinal region being delivered by the Spirit of God as we proclaim Jesus Christ. Because it is not about a good message. It is not about a good church service. It is about Jesus Christ proclaimed to be the Son of God with power according to the Spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. And I was with you in weakness and in much trembling, and my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration. Everybody say demonstration. Demonstration. That means there is a manifestation from a demonstration. You can't have a demonstration without a manifestation. So as I understand the proclamation of Jesus, it is so that your faith would not stand in what? So today, I want you to disavow, release yourself from the conversations of the wisdom of men. Break the bands, sever the ties, the grips, the alignments, all of the hooks that have come to make you identify, make you controlled by, make you ruled through man's wisdom. Take the sword, the spirit of the living God, and sever yourself from the wisdom of men right now. Father, I want you to say with me, Father, Father, my faith faith is from you. you. It's It's designed 
to anchor in the power of God. It's designed to believe that which you've spoken, that which you've finished, comes to manifestation in my life. You see, Abraham was one that understood this dynamic. In Romans chapter 4, verse 20, it says he staggered not. He wasn't drunk like a sailor, listening to this, listening to that, being thrown here, being told, you're too old, you can't have children, this is not going to work. What are you trying to do? Who do you think you are? Anybody hear voices? Anybody hear opinions that are totally contrary to the faith and the power of God? It says, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God, And being fully persuaded. What was he persuaded of? What God had promised, he was able to perform. Now, I want you to picture this man with an old woman and everybody having children except him. Now, they shut up the wombs during the time of Mekesa, the king of the Philistines there. And during the time of that shutting up of the womb, there were no children born. But then Abraham prayed and they had children because in him was a confidence that was unlike any other confidence they met in anyone else. Tell your neighbor, I've got that confidence. I have that faith. I believe what he has spoken. He is able to perform. Now, on the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit did not come as a whisper. He didn't come as a quiet friend. He didn't come as one that you could ask to help you along the way. He came suddenly as a sound of heaven, as a rushing mighty wind, filled all the house where they were sitting, and there appeared unto them cloven tongues as a fire, and it sat on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews and Devout men, every nation under heaven, and now there was noise abroad. There was a, a noise that had gone out. And the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. Now, these were Medes, Parsians. There was people from all over the region. And as they had come together for the feast, there was a tremendous unveiling of hearing of the works of God in the minds and lives of those that were there. They were completely confounded. They were absolutely undone. And Peter says in Acts 2, verse 32, Jesus having raised up, whereof we are all witnesses, wherefore being at the right hand of God and having received the promise of the Father, the Holy Spirit, he has shed forth this which you now Everybody say, see and hear. The event was a visible, audible experience. It was undeniable that they were in the grip of the presence of the Holy Spirit that had raised Jesus out of hell. It was undeniable they were fully engaged and totally enthroned in a presence They had no knowledge who this presence was. So as Peter preaches Jesus, they are cut to the heart. They have no idea what to do. They are undone that he was crucified. And they cry out, what must we do? Peter responds and says unto them in Acts 2.38, repent. Be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus for the remission of sin, 
and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. He didn't say receive Jesus. He said repent, be baptized, and you'll receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. He didn't say work out your problems, trust God. He said you are to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Now, it's a dynamic of manifestation that God has decided that the proclamation of Jesus being alive is to be manifest with power and demonstration of the Spirit. It's not to be heard in an audible sense of understanding. It is to be experienced. All of a sudden, a miracle happens. The man that was lame at the gate gets healed, goes in. It is undisputable, the miracle that manifested. So the religious leaders get together and they, with anger, speak to the apostles and forbid them to preach or teach anymore in the name of Jesus. Tell your neighbor the name of Jesus was in power, bringing manifestation. So the apostles, after they were rebuked, came into victory. And they got together and they said, look what was said to us. Verse 24. And when they heard that, they lifted up their voice unto God. All of a sudden, when obstacles arise, people turn to the living God in prayer. They didn't turn to the natural wisdoms. They didn't turn to the soothsayers of the day. They turned to the living God. And they said, Lord, thou art God, which has made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them. In Acts chapter 4, verse 25, who by the mouth of thy servant David said, why do the heathen rage and the people imagine vain things? Listen to verse 28 carefully. The kings of the earth stood up and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ. Don't think that has changed. So here is opposition. Here is persecution. Here is resistance. It says, for a truth against thy holy child, Jesus, whom thou hast anointed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate, with the Gentiles and the people of Israel were gathered together for to do not what they wanted to do, what to do whatever thy hand and thy counsel determined before done. So what did they say? Now let's talk about this. Let's figure out what the answer is. Let's assemble together and get everybody's viewpoint. No. They said, and now. Everybody say, and now. Lord, behold their threatenings. Grant unto thy servants that with all boldness they may speak thy word. By stretching forth thine hand to heal that signs and wonders may be done by the name of thy holy child, Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together and they were all filled. Now these had already been filled, but they were filled again and again and again. They were constantly being refreshed and filled by the Spirit of God. And it says, and they spake the word of God with what? Boldness. Praying in tongues, healing, signs and wonders manifest through the Holy Spirit. All of a sudden, God says, I'm going to pour out my spirit upon the Gentiles. Peter gets an open vision. He is doing everything, everything to stop God from touching the Gentiles. How many of you know it doesn't matter what somebody stands against? 
It only matter what God has raised us to and what he has spoken to manifest. So during that time in Acts chapter 10, Peter comes to Cornelius and his entire household, and it says in verse 42, he commanded, Jesus commanded us to preach unto the people and to testify that he which was ordained of God to be the judge of the quick and the dead. That everyone, he is risen from the dead and everyone will give an account to the living Christ Jesus. There's not a few people, there's not a 1% that will get by without Jesus. Everyone will meet the judge of those that are alive and those that have passed away. How many of you know there's no escape? You can't get to the throne of God through any other means, through any other way, through any other name, through any other drawing of the Spirit. In verse 45, it says, And of the circumcision believed were astonished, because all of a sudden, as Peter spoke these words, the Holy Spirit fell upon the Gentiles. And as many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Then answered Peter, Can any man forbid water that these should be baptized, not be baptized? which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we. Now, I don't know what you know about the Spirit of God, but he is there in you with power. He is in you with the authority to break the gates of hell open. He is in you with the dominion to rule the atmosphere. He is in you with the voice to command all opposition to bow their knees to the king of glory, the name of Jesus. He is in you as the king of kings and the Lord of lords, and the power of the spirit of God is here to demonstrate that he is who he says he is. Now, many of us live in a complacent, compliant agreement with situations and circumstances, but Jesus paid for it all. And because he paid for it all, it belongs to us. It is our heritage. It is our inheritance. It is manifest by the Spirit. The signs, the wonders are our meat and bread and operational function. It is our norm. It is not the abnormal. Receiving him and living through the power of him is our call. Jesus stood up on that great day of the feast in John chapter 7. And he cries out, if any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. And he that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, he that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this he spoke of the Holy Spirit, the day which believed on him should receive. However, the Holy Ghost was not yet given. All of a sudden, there are two dimensions of the Holy Spirit in manifestation, one upon them and the other through them. It was not for us to say that it is only upon us because Jesus designed the Spirit of God to flow through us. I want you to recognize today we are in the presence of the awesome power and demonstration of the Spirit of the living God that not one physical infirmity has power to stand against the power of the stripes of Jesus. Not one word of man, not one word of diagnosis, not one word of man's influence or those in authority can stand against the power of the King of kings and Lord of lords and the authority of him. That's where you live, that's who you are, that's what's in you, and your faith stands in the power of God. I want you to stand up with me. This is a time of demonstration. 
This is a time of God breaking the band, severing the curse, loosening the assignment of darkness, overturning what man has set up as an agenda because the gospel is the power of God. Jesus Christ is alive according to the spirit of holiness. He is in power and the proclamation of him manifests in us the power of God. Holy Spirit of the living God. We are not here to have our ears tingled. We are here for experience. We are here for the manifestation of your spirit and power that our faith would not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. We are not here, Father, for any other name but the name of Jesus to be exalted and magnified, glorified in his presence. We are here for the living God to manifest himself. Holy Spirit of God. Holy Spirit of God. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead, stir up yourself in your most holy faith. Limbroso kudoshko ribando sa papa adachi wada kubarasawe. Go ahead, stir up yourself in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. For he that speaks in an unknown tongue speaks not unto men, but speaks unto God. And he reveals supernatural mysteries. Pray in the Holy Ghost, stir up yourself. The sign of the Spirit of God manifesting in man was power, demonstration, and praying in the Spirit. Holy Spirit of God. The first thing we're going to do today is if you're here and either you haven't accepted your absolute total conviction that Jesus is alive from the dead, Or maybe you walked away from God. Or you haven't been filled with the power of the Spirit of the living God. You haven't received His Spirit yet. You knew that it's there, but you haven't released that prayer language. I want you to raise your hand on any one of those three. If you don't have that bold release, raise your hand to praying in tongues. If you haven't returned to the Lord with your whole heart, lift your hands and pray in the Spirit. So then everyone here is set up as a miracle worker because right now I'm putting a demand on you to do miracles. Those of you online, we have prayer ministers that are online that will pray with you to be filled with the Spirit of God but I'm putting a demand on you for signs and wonders. You say, but that's what the preacher does. No, that's what the proclamation does. And what the Holy Spirit does is signs and wonders. You see, the design of God is you are the supernatural vessel whereby the Spirit of God pours out of you. As I'm speaking this word, people are breaking strongholds off their life. They're severing the bands of belief systems. As I'm speaking this word, getting ready to put a demand on you to manifest the miraculous of God, the things that have crippled you, the things that have demeaned you, the things that have disqualified you, break off of you now. Father, in the name of Jesus, by the power of the blood that speaks, I up-earth, uproot, and destroy every voice, every voice that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Now, I want you to say with me, lift up your hands and say with me, Father, You have raised me in power. You have released me from guilt, from humanity, from the kingdom of darkness. 
and you made me a son of God. You gave me the promise of the Father, the Spirit of God. So today, everything that withstands you withstands the power of God and bows because you are greater than he that is in this world. Fill me, Father. I drink in afresh the power, the spirit of the living God. I drink in. Go ahead and drink in. Drink in. Drink in. Drink in. Drink in. Drink in. Selemano Sakaba. Now put your hands on your belly and say with me, I am filled to overflowing and out of my mouth speak signs and wonders and I pray in new tongues to the living God. Now go ahead and do it. Lembrando se che remando sacana manda e decere lembro so codo sacarendo sabada we bi lembrando sanda lembro so corre bacana che we we Holy Spirit of the living God you have ordained us your fountainhead. You put on us a mandate. Bring forth the miraculous of God. You put on us a mandate. Bring forth the signs and wonders. Now I want you to do something in the power of the Spirit of God. not in the power of your desire, but in the power of the Spirit of God. I want you to speak from your spirit the rebuke, the overthrow of the enemy's operations assigned against you and your house. I want you out of your mouth to command forth the power of healing virtue to those of your house and your own body. That there is a sign and wonder from God, the manifestation of healing virtue from his spirit. So first, let's go forth to the kingdom of darkness and rebuke and sever by the power of the name of Jesus every assignment we command by the power of the word of the living God. In the spirit of resurrection life, the Holy Spirit, we command down, we mandate rebuke to the voices of obstruction of worry deceit and empowerment of the enemy we command you broken severed ended now in the name of Jesus God you have given us a voice and the voice of God in us is thus saith the Lord Thus saith the Lord, we break the bands of the humanity and the atmosphere of strife and division and curse over our family. Jesus, you are in power. We break the voice. We break the agreements. We up earth, we destroy every unlawful work of the enemy in this earth. Silence, silence in the name of Jesus. Father, we command the overthrow of doubt, double-mindedness, fear and uncertainty. We upearth the root of destruction against our life. 
in the name of Jesus. Now I want you to put your hands on your head and say, body, you are the temple of the living God. It is unlawful for my mind, for my nervous system, for my skin, my bones, my flesh, all the internal organs. You are unlawful with the assignment of sickness against you. By the stripes of Jesus, you were healed. Receive body, the healing virtue of the living God. It flows in us. It flows through us. It manifests in our joints, in our back, in our legs. I command every spirit of infirmity assigned against me, assigned against my house, I command you bound. Loose your hold. Silence your voice. This house is the temple of God. This body is the healed of God. These backs are the healed of God. This stomach, all the entrails in my lungs are the healed of God. This heart and all cardiovascular systems are the healed of God. These eyes are the healed of God. This mind is the healed of God. By the stripes of Jesus, my word is yes and amen. And I refuse to give entrance to the spirit of infirmity in the name that's above every name. Now the Bible says with our declaration, give thanksgiving. I want you to give thanksgiving to the living God. Lift up a voice of a shout of praise. Lift up your voice in glory and majesty unto him that is worthy of all glory. Yes! Yes! Now I want you to hear this. Now unto him that is a power. Now unto him. Now unto him that is able. That is his supernatural power to do exceeding abundantly above all we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Put your hands on your belly and say, Holy Spirit in power, you are in me and all that you are in me releases my Father to do exceeding abundantly above all I ask or think. So Holy Spirit in power, I am dependent on you. So when I pray with you, I expect you to pour out of me se lembrosa correndo sale pavando sai lembrando se lembrota anda aqui que lembroja de lembrando se le mano codo e cheque de papaha lembrando se lendo reto rosco torre pavando aqui holy spirit of god flow out of your temple flow out 
of the belly of your church flow out in power, delivering all that they speak to. Pero sole prato hashekere mama adone le prota ane chewe lembro se kere mono ya chile bebendo se lembro sakota hai lembro ndo sakodo she lembro ta hai fire of God fire of God fire of God consume everything unlawful everything that you did not ordain destroy it in the matchless name of Jesus I want you to say with me boldly in me the power of God resides flowing out of me with signs and wonders pouring upon me for miracle service for others I am a miracle worker I have the Spirit of God in power in the name of Jesus now I want you to reach your hands to your neighbor and I want you to pray what you see in your spirit you are supernaturally ordained to operate by the power of the anointing I want you to pray for your neighbor right now and see and command forth the supernatural virtue of God God by the power of your spirit I see in the spirit voices of division and strife in family I command you bound silence go you have no power in their life God I see right now an inflammation in the throat Holy Spirit of God I command that pain in that throat bound go now God you've given us the anointing to break the yoke over the brain I speak the tormenting spirits that have affected the minds of God's children I command them bound in the name of Jesus I speak the voices that are contrary aligned with the kingdom of darkness you are bound loose your hold in the name of Jesus there's a fire right now there's a fire right now going down somebody's stomach it's going down the esophagus it's going into the stomach it's healing it's like liquid fire it is manifesting spirit of the living God healing is the children's bread God I give you praise Cancer cannot live in your presence. Tumors cannot live in your presence. Depression cannot live in your presence. Torment cannot live in your presence. Pain cannot live in your presence. Oh, give him a shout of praise and glory and bless him. Bless him. We command the canceling of surgeries. We command the canceling of procedure. We command the canceling of the works of man. We speak, we are the healed of the living God. Yes! I want you to say yes! Yes! Go ahead and give him one more shout of praise. He is worthy of glory and honor and power. He's worthy to be enthroned as God, God Almighty. Now, 
How many of you have an instant manifestation of freedom or healing in your body? Raise your hand and wave at me. I want you to look around. Signs and wonders, demonstration of the Spirit and power. That's immediate. How many of you are expecting when you go home, God is manifesting in that home? My God, my God. You may be seated. We give him praise because he says in Psalm 110, verse three, my people shall be willing in the day of my power. Willingness is that you will do what he says. When he speaks to you to pray for the sick, you don't think, oh, I don't want to intrude, but you say, excuse me, I have in me a grace from God to bring healing. Would you mind if I prayed for you? Because God is a God that loves you and will heal you. Tell your neighbor all shame all reason of doubt has stopped today. Then as we get ready to give, as ready to worship God, Moses about to build the tabernacle in the wilderness, just like we're about to put a new roof on the building and new air conditioning and, oh, go ahead and get excited. We're, we're about to, you might not think that this building is over 30 some years old, but it is. And my God, what victory we have. We just get this done for us and the next generation to come. You say, you sound telling, oh yeah, this, this roof will outlast me. What's that? Yeah, some of the air conditioners are up to 40 years old. It says in 2 Corinthians 9, verse 6, But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also how? Sparingly. He that sows bountifully shall reap also how? Bountifully. Every man, according as he purposes in his heart, just like Moses, he said it's all about your heart. It's all about your conviction to see God be God. So let him give. He said, now make sure that you don't have any attitude. You don't have anything imposed on you. That there's no controls trying to make you do anything. Necessity. For God loves a what? Cheerful giver. And then it says, and God in this power is able to make all grace abound towards you. That you, and I love this, always have all sufficiency in all things that may abound to how many good works? Every good work. Now this morning, we're going to give to God. Now if you want to sow in the beginning of this process, we're finalizing all of our bids within this week, and within two to three weeks, they're gonna begin construction. If you wanna to sow toward that, put it in other, and write down love his house. Just write down, love his house. Now you say, how much do we have to raise? It's somewhere about a half a million dollars. Tell your neighbor, that is nothing to God. <laughs> Absolutely nothing to God. So let's thank God right now as we worship him. Father, I thank you that from our hands, our supernatural seeds that is miraculous to do the works that you've called. God, I give you praise for the great grace that abounds. Receive from our hands what's worship in yours. In Jesus' name, amen. 